guys just missed singing. We were singing, but now we're rolling. So welcome to the Cinefix Roundtable for this week. Um, we keep getting more and more low rent around here. Yeah. Um, but we've added a camera, so we've not really. We've, yeah, so we, we lost <laughs> some fancy chairs. We're obviously, we're in the green screen studio again. Another we lost homeless the, round table. Another homeless round table. We lost the fancy chairs because damn, are they uncomfortable. Yeah, they're terrible. They're hard to sit in. So now we're just sitting on boxes. But yeah. to make up for that, we have three cameras now. Yeah. One, two, three. Three cameras. And uh, with, these, with these Apple boxes, we can kind of rap to you like an episode. Oh man, he's like, we're on a stoop. Look, look, look. Yeah. Gonna let me break great. this down. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> like, he says, not facing the <laughs> yeah. camera. Uh, we're all it's just like that. I'm on the verge of telling you like it is. <laughs> mm -hmm. Exactly. Uh, okay, so now that all of that business is out of the way, mm -hmm. uh, what are we talking about this week? We're talking about trailers. Talking about trailers. Talking about trailers. Cause... That's the singing that you missed. Because <laughs> the just taste Christmas it. movie season is almost here, folks. Right. Yeah. All we've got, all we have is to look forward to things, and this week was chock full of really interesting trailers. We're climbing out of the slump, it's finally October. October is typically a slow month as well, but Gravity put an end to that last yeah. year, mm -hmm. so I think we're starting to see a lot of big movies and not just yeah. time wasters <clears throat> while studios are waiting for Oscar season. They always say that like a certain month is bad for movies until a movie comes along and it's like, no it isn't, yeah. and then right. they're like, oh that's a great month for movies. Yeah. Remember March just... was dead and now it's like a third of the superhero movies are coming yeah. out in March, right. well, so it's just... basically just January, February <clears throat> that are the not you know, the yeah. dumping grounds. It's stupid. Just make good movies. It's, just make honestly, a good movie and put it out whenever. Like, stop, if it's good, we'll go see it. <laughs> and stop stacking the deck against yourself by releasing your good movies when everyone else is. Why don't right. you pick a yeah. slower month and which then I think make is, a lot more money? I think is sort of a thing that, that's starting to happen, well, yeah. uh, which is interesting. And nothing's more emblematic of this experience than, like, trying to go see a movie with, like, a kid or somebody. You know, you don't want to take them to a PG-13 movie. And... <laughs> Two weeks ago, there were no kid movies out, and in the next three weeks, there are going to yep. be like four of them, and we can't possibly see that many, because you can if you really hate talk. talking to your kids. Right, mm -hmm. <laughs> right. Don't discuss anything Join with them. Dusty. Though in fairness, nothing is is preventing you from taking your kid to an R-rated movie and then just letting them scream the whole time until right. they get angry. Right. Only Again. only Join custody. Only That's unspoken social know. contracts keep me preventing that, that from happening. But still, like, there's always at least only a maximum of two of each kind of movie out at a time. Right. But sometimes there's zero, and sometimes there's. Four. Well, and it's interesting that like the superhero movie phenomenon has kind of caused us to sort of like the summer movie season has swelled to now include March and November. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so like that's that's sort of a, a kind of a, a benefit of all of these crazy superhero movies because literally, yeah, it's like we can't put every superhero movie on the same weekend like yeah, we used to. they can't all be July 4th because weekend. Because <laughs> now there's 105 of them, so. Well, and Christmas season has expanded from Oscar bait and f like Christmas, yeah. you know, movies to include some blockbusters too. I think <clears throat> Harry Potter really led the yeah. way on that. There's, there's like a six a week window spots, yeah. where there's no anticipation at all. Right. <laughs> it's like late August through kind of mid September and then it starts picking up. Yeah, and then January like 20th through February right. 18th. All of the fancy indie movies that we never heard of until they were nominated for Best Picture. Yep. Yeah. Uh, we're gonna go see those late January, early February when they're finally re-released in more than 18 <laughs> theaters. That's when Judy Dent Gets hot. <clears throat> yes. It's yes. That time. Make of it hot, Judy Dench. <laughs> uh, that's the kind of thing that we can say now that we're sitting like this. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah, when we were on the bar stools, we could have no. fallen. We would have fallen, fallen right, off. right off of those yeah. stools. I feel like I have to like cling to the back of it, like, <laughs> like or something. Just like. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, the good news is the, the these boxes that we're sitting on are actually more comfortable than the bar stools. So I, I have to concentrate on on good. That as this goes along. You'll just watch me slowly <laughs> build, <laughs> slowly like a, a weird puddle of like a troglodyte. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> So all that to say, now that we've used a dollar word like troglodyte, I think we can get down to business. Yeah. Um, I think we're ready to go. So the movies that we are looking forward to, some trailers that came out this week. Uh, the first one, we got another uh, trailer for the uh, uh, Imitation Game. Oh my god, I'm so excited. Yes. Also, the production design looks amazing. It looks really yeah. good. Look, that's an amazing cast. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, it, it's so British, though. Like, it's well, that moment British. in the trailer where uh, it's the UK Benedict trailer. It's just we're... like we're going to crack and uncrack a little code by Nazi. <laughs> <laughs> and then Karen Knight is like, ew. Like, <laughs> like, like, had, like this is so British. I can't had they been it. sipping tea while they did that, it would have been more British. But that's it. 
<laughs> well, yeah. we, we the, it was the UK trailer that dropped this week, right. and like literally, it ended with like the greatest British film ever, or some some <laughs> yeah. similar brand. I of believe copy. that was the text on screen. <laughs> and then there's like a quick flash of a fight scene in there, and even the fight looked super British. It was like very dignified. Yeah. It was. It's it like was, we're talking about honor, and then I'm gonna punch you, and that's that's how British. <laughs> all right. It's a shoe in for a BAFTA. Oh, it's oh gonna get all God. the BAFTAs. Yeah. All of them. Yeah. Every single one of it's them. It's gonna fill a bathtub with BAFTA. It's gonna... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag that? BAFTA bathtub. Put it in the bathtub. Put it in the bathtub. Yeah. All that to say, uh, it looks really good. It looks yeah. really good. It has math shot, like, action sequences. Right, yeah. right. Like, there are some, the only unfortunate thing about the trailer was it was one of those where it's just like, I feel like I just saw the whole movie. But I'm still on board and really want to yeah. see it. And, and like, the cast is, it's Cumberbatch, obviously. It's uh, Mark, Strong. Uh, Mark Strong, who's awesome. The first thing I said watching the trailer was like, is that the voice of Mark Strong? <laughs> and I got really excited. And, and then, then it's uh, Kira Knightley, like, Kira Knightley. doing not laggies. And Ty Tywin Lannister. And Tywin Lannister. Or the bad guy from Last Action Hero. I, depending on how you I like was, to I wasn't sure who you were talking about mm -hmm. until the bad guy from Last and, Action Hero. Uh, and that guy from Downton Abbey. Um, but <clears throat> I don't know if it'll win all the Academy Awards. No, because it is one. so British. Uh, and the King's Speech kind of like swept in as a dark horse. I think everyone's looking out for that. I think, uh, <laughs> everyone's uh, everyone's on guard against well, the I King's Speech. Well, I think that the, the Hollywood Foreign Press Association could really finagle this a bit, depending on their distribution of Golden yeah. Globes. Right. And mm -hmm. then and it'll then probably it'll, be one of those movies that wins all the Globes but none of the Oscars. Yeah, it'll mm -hmm. have to get nominated for some or all of the Oscars. Right. Going, going, going back through. a second to talking about like showing the whole movie, they only hint at. They, they sort of hint at one part of Alan Turing's life and the fact that he mm -hmm. was homosexual. They, they only barely, they just barely touch on that. Like, in the oh, trailer. he might be gay. Mm. <laughs> yeah, in, in a very British yeah. way, you know? <laughs> um, so I want, I'm wondering how big a part of the, the film, how much of, the, of that they're going to deal with in the actual film. Because that's, I mean, obviously for the that, time that he lived, that's, that was a big deal. And that was illegal. Yeah. Like, actually illegal. Right. So, yeah, we're, we're all looking good. And the, uh, the director is a guy named, a guy named Morton Tilden. Which is an so awesome British. Scandinavian so name, yeah. Uh, but Scandinavian directors are so good, like because there's the guy. Wait, that he's did... Scandinavian? Yes, yeah. I'm he's he's from uh, he's from I was uh, Norway. Yeah. Like super British. No, no, no. Yeah. Uh, well, Morton Tilden is spelled with a Y. Oh, oh okay. Oh. I was and like, not enough consonants for Scandinavian. Yeah. But, but Scandinavian directors like a silent K J G. Yeah. <laughs> Scandinavian directors have been have been. You know they're they're really good. Like the guy that did Tinker Tailor, uh, Soldier Spy, mm -hmm. was the, the same guy that did uh, Let the Right One In. It was really great. And obviously mm -hmm. Nicholas Reffin is everybody loves him. Uh, so the pedigree of this is yeah, it's just just well most everybody. All the Baptists. Everybody seems to love him. <laughs> <laughs> so all the Baptists to Imitation Game. Yes. And now we can move on to what will what really will win all of the Oscars, no matter what we say, is Interstellar. <sighs> <laughs> I, because gravity was such a big deal at last year's Oscars, maybe people will have space fatigue. You think? Maybe. I well, after Guardians, I feel like space is coming back. It's coming back in a big way. You know, yeah. and we got Star I'm Wars sure on the horizon. Hope so, yeah. yeah. But that's the thing. There wasn't. I mean, there was the sa same amount of space in the trailers. This trailer as there has been in all the other trailers. Right. Like we start the ship, and I still there's don't really a weird know what planet. This movie's about. Yeah, well, it's trailers... about a guy who like hunts drones, and he's showing his daughter like, "Hey, here's this drone I killed. Let's do something socially conscious with it." <coughs> and then they go into space, and they find this killer wave, mm -hmm. and they surf that killer wave. And then they spend uh, the rest. And what's of... her name doesn't wear makeup. And then they okay. spend the rest Movie of the time show. stoically speaking out the window of a Lincoln. <laughs> It's gonna be great. <laughs> well, the, the uh, trailers have all been his very heavy on the daughter character, yeah. which I don't know if if the move. Honestly, if the proportions remain the same for the movie, I'm gonna be like, why do we? She's not the one flying to another galaxy. I yeah. think they just kind of <clears throat> want to like sweep under the rug the fact that Anne Hathaway is the real female lead. They're like, mm, sorry about it. Yeah. <laughs> Well, look. I mean, they, you gotta have that. You gotta have that story. Uh, that you gotta have that element in the in the story. Like yeah. the the oh. heartbreaking, you know, whatever it is, element mm -hmm. in yeah. the story. It's just like how much of the movie is that gonna be? Because like it's Christopher Nolan, so you know it's gonna be at least two and a half hours, possibly four. <laughs> Like, mm -hmm. It's gonna be a big, long movie. Yeah, but and if all of it is like crying on Earth, like <laughs> it's gonna be. <laughs> well, yeah. we've it's said it's gonna before. be real. <laughs> And, and Jessica has... Chastain can cry on Earth with the best of them. But, <laughs> yeah, like... We've said before that Nolan has had trouble with the like personal dramas in all of his otherwise very large set piece movies and, and Memento. Like 
dodge that bullet because the guy had no personality because mm -hmm. he couldn't remember who he right, was. Right, right. It actually uh, helped him quite a bit. <laughs> so point. at first, I think we, we worked from the assumption that the, the heavy proportion of daughter in the trailer was like, oh no, this one's going to have personal drama. But the the trailer, the daughter lines in the trailer are all the very obvious beats when your dad's going to go to another galaxy. Yeah. Try, you know, not that I, I'm sure if my dad would, had to fly to another galaxy to find us a new home, I would be heartbroken that I'd probably never see him again. I would be shocked if my dad was doing it. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, don't I would, I would, company? I would, yeah, I'd be like, look. Why are you doing that? Surely there's somebody better we can <laughs> like, find. You're an old man, isn't there? Like a 23-year-old? Yeah. Like, like, should I, like Matthew McConaughey or somebody be doing I feel like there's a much more handsome Let's send the, the 72-year-old software engineer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it is kind of the the cool thing. Of the, the cool knock on Christopher Nolan is to say that like emotionally, he keeps you at arm's distance. Like He never lets you in, and, and his characters are never really making believable yeah. connections. Like, And that's kind of the hip thing to do to hate on Christopher Nolan or whatever. I happen to agree with it, <laughs> cool or not. Like, yeah. I, and that's why, like, if this movie is like space adventure and finding a new planet and all the crazy shit and like the little Tetris blocks that oh they're walking God, around, that, which, what is that, by the way? What I'm worried it about turns is the that... the monolith from 2001. <laughs> exactly, yeah. It just shows it back up on Earth back <laughs> yeah. in time and all the monkeys are like, oh my God. That would be amazing if Interstellar was a prequel to 2001 A Space Odyssey. <laughs> That would be you the ballsiest thing I've ever seen wow. in my whole life. So hopefully, of the four hours that this movie will undoubtedly be, uh, hopefully three and a half of it is like going crazy in space. I kind of hope it'll be like, and this is going way back, but like the first Matrix trailer, or like essentially all of the trailers for the Matrix never really explained what it was. Oh, that was and so when oh, yeah, you got it into it, it literally was like, Whoa! Yeah. Yeah. And I really hope that they're doing that <clears throat> with this, mm -hmm. and there's like a whole bunch more that they're not right. sharing. Yeah, because they're going to somewhat extreme levels of secrecy for this movie, so I'm hoping that the payoff right. is worth yeah. it. Yeah. So what if this is actually the prequel to The Matrix? <laughs> rather and by the time they get back, the machines have taken over. <laughs> And then that explains, then, like, that explains the, the hoity uh, British architect, because that, that Michael Caine <laughs> turns into that, so... If this movie can explain the Matrix sequels, <laughs> give it all then the I, Oscars. I, I, will yeah. give, I will give all the credit back to Christopher Nolan. Why that do happens. we leave Earth, Mr. McConaughey? To find a bit of life. To find... <laughs> to figure out what those Matrix movies meant. <laughs> okay, enough Interstellar. Uh, moving on to, to the best movie. If we're talking about award season, we have to talk about taking three. You mean, you mean take, take three in? Take three in. Put, yeah. Putting the three instead of oh, the yeah. E, it seems but like it works such for too a... fast, too furious. <clears throat> it only works and for, no uh, well, what, isn't like, until... Isn't this taken three Tokyo <clears throat> Drift? No. No? <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, shit, my notes yeah. are wrong. This is taken three electric booga three. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it looks pretty cool. All that said, like honestly, I'm a little more excited about it than I was for Taken Two. It's yeah, it looks super action. Yeah. Taken I mean, Three still yeah, took. Basic... Taken Three still took. <laughs> took harder. <laughs> took with a vengeance. Took with a vengeance. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it sort of looks like Jason Bourne is the fugitive. Like it's like yeah. those two. It's like the Bourne fugitive. They Which, even you... had like the tunnel, <clears throat> like yeah. water shot in there. It's just mm -hmm. like, come on, guys. When you say it like that, I'm in. <laughs> I'm totally. <laughs> You know? I mean, and the good thing about movie, a movie like Taken is it doesn't have anything to live up to. It really doesn't. No, and like, especially for me, since I didn't see the first two. Yeah, there, exactly, well. exactly. I'm not expecting Last Crusade levels of <clears throat> great. There is no bar for Taken 3 to clear. And so it's the kind of movie that you can just honestly just go sit in front of and try to have a good time. It's already cleared that, it, whatever bar it had, it already cleared it with the trailer, because it looks yeah. action-y and I want it to be right. action-y. Yeah. yeah, and it's so. not about a kidnapping again. Yeah. Taken 4 is just his iPad gets snatched. <laughs> <laughs> wow, and, then, was... and just yelling into the other room for like a kid to come show him how to yeah. use the computer. His grandson's gonna come. <laughs> yeah, that, that's why he has to go find his daughter who's gotten snatched again, because she's yeah. the only one who knows how to talk to iTunes. <laughs> <laughs> well look, we've got, a, that's, that's another couple of takes movies right there so we can already move on yeah. I feel like. you're welcome you're welcome Olivier Megaton which is the actual name of the director of this film <laughs> a transformer directed this? Olivier Megaton is the guy's name he a did French the last transformer? he did the last two take he did taken uh, or he did taken two he did a, a transporter three he did that Colombiano oh, he with, did transporter three yeah this movie, Taken 3 is going to be real bad. <laughs> it's going to be real bad. Olivia Megaton is like something that I would prank a French restaurant with. Like, right. yeah. call up and be like, I need a table for 10. Uh, this is Olivier Megaton. This is Olivier yeah. Megaton. Like if some guy came up to me and was just like, hi, I'm Olivier Megaton, I'd be like, 
I don't believe you. <laughs> no. No, you're not. That's a made up name. That's a silly made up name. <laughs> Moving right along to Exodus. We have uh, hashtag Ridley Scott Bible. Uh, looks like good production. Truly is already exhausted. Yeah. I, it, I just it's just like, do look not how care. expensive this was. Right. Here's like, the, that's what that It show feels was. like he's trying to make the like the big epics from the 40s, and I just don't care. Well, we're Zero getting interest in We're that. getting a lot of them. You know, ben, they're doing Ben Hur again. Um, <laughs> Everything ben Hur, it was only. <laughs> Ben Hur, hardly <laughs> know her. Ah, there, there's the one. Ah. See, I, the, everything in the trailer looked pretty cool. I mean, setting aside the the whitewash cast, which has been discussed in other sure. places. Well, it, I mean, hey, they weren't whitewashed. They put a Bale, bunch of brown makeup. They were Bale all dirty. Plus bronzer equals Moses. Right. Exactly. So. And Joel Edgerton plus weird baby head equals <laughs> Ramses. Yeah, so like leaving aside that like actual issue, everything in the trailer looked really cool. But the thing is, I didn't I didn't really care for Gladiator nearly as much as a lot of other people seem to. So I yeah. don't have high I'm hopes. Still trying to find the people who actually liked Gladiator. I you know. It, you know I like Gladiator. Hey, if you like Gladiator, let us know in the comments <coughs> yeah. below. There I, you go. I, I can't object to Gladiator winning the the best picture in two thousand because I think it was a pretty shallow field. Yeah. Um. But like, I didn't care for Gladiator, and so that doesn't give me high hopes for another Ridley Scott. You were yeah, not I entertained. I don't. You were not entertained. <laughs> I'm generally not that entertained by Russell Crowe, which I realize oh, really? is like a personal thing. The Crow Man? Yeah. Like again, like there, there's nothing I can Throwing point phones to. It's and just taking names. it's an incompatibility of, of charisma with him and me. Right. Um. So like, I just, <clears throat> I generally feel like he has to work harder to make me like his performance than he does mm -hmm. for the average person. You know what? He's he's due to play like a character named Boner in a spring break comedy. Like, he really, he ought to do that. <laughs> I would watch once. the hell out of that. Hell but yeah. yeah, I mean. Uh, but it's ironic. He's really super intense. It's Bonier yeah. Megaton. <laughs> but, <laughs> uh, my favorite part of the trailer was just when the fellow was just like, I am God. And I was like, Kanye? Kanye? <laughs> Is that you? <laughs> Is that you? No, he's too white. <laughs> All right, so uh, Exodus uh, coming soon. Uh, the other, another trailer that uh, landed this week that actually I'm really excited about is Inherent Vice. Yeah. Um, which I've, since Boogie Nights, I've really, really wanted to enjoy a Paul Thomas Anderson movie, and mm -hmm. I just haven't. You didn't like Punch Drunk Love? Not really. I really? Liked, yeah. I like that one. Um, and I liked There Will Be Blood. I, <laughs> see, There Will Be Blood and, uh, and The Master and, and movies like I... I, you look at them, and clearly they're great movies, they're great performances, they're put together in a really brilliant way. I just can't spend time with them. Like, I, they're just mm -hmm. so hard to sit in front of. I feel but that way about The Master, but There Will Be Blood is, that's the last time I saw a movie in theaters twice. Like, I oh, liked really? it, like, I never oh, wow. do that, but I liked it enough to see yeah. it at the movies twice, which is... There you go. Well, High praise, I guess. It's funny because I had the opposite reaction. I had a very similar Clint-like reaction to There Will Be Blood. <laughs> and not only that, yeah. not only that, it sounds like a condition. It's, it, it, uh, it might be. I think everybody in the movie theater at which I saw There Will Be Blood had that reaction. So, like, when, when we were filing out, you could kind of see that everybody was like, oh, man, I had to sit in front of that for two yeah. hours. Is there anything yeah. better than see. sitting in a theater and realizing that the rest of the audience is uncomfortable? <laughs> yeah, no, it's, a good, it's a good feeling. And yeah. again, I can't tell why everybody seemed to dislike it that much because you can't fault the performances, yeah. you can't really fault the script or the story or what it was well, trying to do. It's the subject matter. I it mean, was it's just, just, it was not a happy subject matter yeah. and I didn't no. feel that much better for having explored that, that subject no matter for two yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It's one of those movies that like I, like I can watch once and I can appreciate it and I can say, yep, that's a great movie. Uh, and then I'm just never gonna watch it again. I yeah. think part of it is but that like, like Inherent Vice, that's legit. Inherent Vice looks like it's it's gonna be a lot of fun. It like, sort it of looks, looks sort like of, American Hustle too. It that looks trailer, it's, there's just a little like bit the, of that the vibe and the pacing. It feels a little like like uh, a more Elmore Leonardish Big Lebowski mm. in a way. Uh, I mean, it looks like a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah. it looks like it's got a little of, of everything comedically. You know, with this crazy and, and based on the Thomas uh, Pinchon book. So there's a lot of weirdness going on there. Yeah. I, I bet it won't be as funny as we expect. Right. Well, Punch Drunk Love certainly Thomas wasn't. <laughs> <clears throat> right. Well, I mean, well, that, that's this is definitely a case where we'll have to see the whole thing and see how how the two hours right. makes you feel. Because yeah. I thought There Will Be Blood was gonna land with me a little bit more. I also I don't know so. if there's a runtime for it yet, but I also wouldn't be surprised if this was three a, a three-hour movie. Yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. it's P.T. Anderson. That's what he does. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. And I've said many times, you know, the correct length for all movies is 90 minutes. <laughs> 
but occasionally I'll let it slide, as I did with There Will Be Blood, and yeah. hopefully There's this There's some one... great 72-minute movies. <laughs> <laughs> if you, well, you know, like, do we count, do we count credits in 90 minutes? <laughs> well, you know, hopefully Inherent Vice is, is a, it, if it's exactly 90 minutes, that's great, but if it's longer, I hope it <laughs> earns it. Just so you can enjoy it. Right. I think I'm going to like that one, but, uh, you know, you never know until you actually sit through it. <clears throat> you should definitely have the, the experience that I had this morning when you sent around the links to all the trailers of watching the Exodus trailer and then the... Um, inherent Vice trailer and just marveling at the complete discrepancy in oh, scale. I had the same, like, yeah. I had the so. same revelation watching those back to back. I was just like, well, that's completely different. We gotta start doing weird double features. Yeah. <laughs> like that would be a fun thing to do. Let's, we'll start gonna we're gonna start doing weird double features. I have to say just that like Exodus wine and Inherent Vice would be a six and a half hour double feature. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Oh my god. Or like Inception and Biodome. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> They're both kind Look, of like science -y. Let's go. Yeah. Let's go do that right now. <laughs> One other trailer that uh, we actually just watched, and uh, I don't think it caused the singing that everybody missed at the top of the episode, but it might. Mm. But there's a new uh, Pixar movie coming out. Yeah. What was mm -hmm. it? I never forgot what it was Inside called. Out. Inside Out. Yes. And it seems to be about uh, the personification of a child's emotions. Well, the first two minutes of the trailer led us to think that it was a clip show of all the other Pixar movies. Right. We're like, is this like a documentary about Pixar? Like, what is this? We remember you, Pixar. Yeah. <laughs> Stop it. You've only been around for like 10 years anyway. Yeah. It would be like if I made a YouTube video and titled it All the Things That Made Me Cry, uh -huh. and then yeah. just showed those clips from it. <laughs> yeah, the point of the trailer was, remember how Pixar makes you feel emotions? Here's a movie about emotions. Right. right. The fact that they decided to clip sh go the clip show angle with it makes me worry about the, the quality of the upcoming movie Absolutely. because, to, in my opinion, Pixar's ne never made anything but a good movie. Like, some have been excellent, some have been well above average. I, I know you'll debate me on Up, but... <clears throat> I, oh, I would call you up. I was yeah. gonna talk about Cars too. Oh, okay. <laughs> it, Any yeah, of the let, let, car, the first Cars. Was, well, Cars. Anyway, point is, Cars two was a whole another category of things. But um, the but point like is, Pixar, they default at solid, solid movies. Yeah, mm -hmm. Pixar like movies by yeah by default are at least quite good. Right. And and so like I've never had to question when a Pixar trailer comes out that this thing's going to a make me cry and b maybe my next favorite movie of all time. I feel like I've seen this before with, and I can't place the specific trailer, but I feel like they've always been like, you know, from the studio that brought you all of these other things mm -hmm. that you love, um, and they've been, they've not been shy about sort of but patting themselves on the back. But have they ever shown clips from yeah, all of the things that you love? Yeah, they have at the front yeah. of any of their trailers. Yeah. Yeah. So this makes me worry that they're like, oh no, wait, it's Pixar, so don't worry, it'll be well, good. It's like they don't believe in enough in this new project standing alone. So they're like, hey, this is going to be like all those other things you love. Right. Which is implied because it's the same it's I mean, it's weird because it's almost like a white bother. Because <clears throat> there's so little like new content in there, and it's just like showing you a bunch of other exactly. things. It was, easily, it was easily like at least 60-40 clip show. Like, yeah, probably, more, we, than that. probably we more than that. We paused the trailer because we thought we were being pumped. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I thought it was... <laughs> <laughs> it was like a fan-made trailer. Yeah. After <laughs> 70 seconds of... Like, Clip wait a minute, show. is this a joke? We were like, oh, is this, is it just going to end with Pixar's great? Yeah. yeah. Um, on the other hand, we could, my inclination could be completely wrong because t Pixar's never made anything I've hated. Um, yeah. And this, the concept for this movie is a tough sell. Mm -hmm. And if anyone can figure out how to make this tough sell concept into a good movie, it is Pixar. Well, the cast is really good. I mean, you have Amy Poehler playing the like the personification of Joy, and yeah. then Louis Black is playing Anchor. So it's, it's like great. right there, I'm like, uh, that might be okay. funny. But like, what a what a yeah. It, it seems sandwich. like a, it seems like a weird sort of uh, they, they they might have shot themselves in the foot by, and maybe that's just us being like, kind of. On the other hand, like disenchanted with the whole like, but like, who, like oh, what are you doing? Who is that for? Like, it's, it's not a to space get, fatigue. It's not to get kids excited. It's not going to get like parents excited. Like, why? Yeah. I guess it's just yeah. like you know, it's it, those title cards. It's like from the people who brought you Toy Story three and Up and blah. Like you could just cycle through all of that stuff real quick and just title cards. But instead, they did uh, like you said, mm -hmm. a sizzle reel. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, we can go back to the greater point of what's the point of a teaser trailer anyway. Like, what is ever the point well, of putting it, out a trailer a year and a half in advance of a movie yeah. to be like, look, we've got a thing. We're only going to show you a <clears throat> shoe or a short film about a, a snowman and a reindeer. Just, just FYI, we're working on something. Yeah. So and it will have 
don't go to some other animation company. It'll have We're a still character in it. Well, the point of the sizzle is exactly this. We're talking about it right now. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. Oh, they got us. Coming, like, damn we're it. playing into their hand. This is they the intention us. of that sizzle reel. Yeah, <laughs> and coming whatever date is feel so It's, it's kind of like if they put it out there, then they got actually have to make it. Yeah. It's like when you tell everyone, it's like, yeah, yeah, I'm eating better. And then they catch you eating like cheese fries. Right. right. Oh, f you rape, man. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like, no, I've been working out a little bit. Then it's like you have to lose weight. Yeah. Yeah. Like, because you told everybody. Yeah. The, the, oh, man. <laughs> as if they haven't been working on this movie for a year and a half already. Oh, they're going to be fine. I, you know, it's just, <laughs> it was just a weird, weird, I'm just glad they didn't release, like, like several uh, Inside Out GIFs announcing that there was going to be a trailer next week. Like, I'm tired of the trailers for trailers. Like, that's yeah. what I'm tired of. Um, and another thing. <clears throat> another thing I don't like about. Uh, you know, it really grinds my, my gears. You know what gets <laughs> you, my goat? You're twisting my bolts, Pixar. <laughs> a lot of people are doing their, like, media, business media master's dissertations on, like, the whole marketing complex yeah. of, of expensive movies because. Yeah. Well, you can. I, I read the other day, there's actually, I can't remember what college it is, but there's a college that's offering a major in the Marvel Cinematic Universe now. Which that's, is like, guys. Stop. Yeah. That's not a thing. Stop it. Because by the time McConaughey gets back with the next Earth, like, we're gonna, we're all gonna be dead and it's gonna be your fault because mm -hmm. you majored in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Now I'm saying that as a guy whose full-time job it is to talk about the Marvel Cinematic Universe, but, but uh, you didn't need a degree for But it. I didn't get a degree. You're, you're like Steve Jobs, you're like Bill Gates. I dropped out of Marvel school <laughs> and great. I'm fine. Uh, okay, well that's plenty. Uh, let us know what you think about all this stuff. <laughs> that ref that fulfills our time requirements. <coughs> yes. Uh, good day. Uh, yeah, we should act all like official newscastery on our sitting on our boxes in a green screen stage with nothing on it. Well, then we should Stack get four cameras papers. and then we all talk directly into the cameras like we're not in the same room. <coughs> Thank you for joining oh, us God. this week on Cinemax Now's Round <laughs> Table. I'm news. Clint Gage with T, Christina, and uh, Truly. We'll see you next week. Goodbye. And then we do a bunch of like, fun things. Good I night take and good on. luck. Good night and good luck. <laughs> Uh, but seriously though, let us know what you think in the comments below. Click like and subscribe. Come back next time for more movie news on Cinemax Now. I've been saying it so much, I can say it that quickly. The words have lost all meaning. It's a lunch time. Like, Let's get out of here! <laughs>